Welcome, foolish mortals, to There's No Turning Back Now. That's right. Welcome, 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 foolish mortals. How's everyone doing today? Hope you guys are having a great day and a great week. If not, then hopefully this this podcast, listening to this podcast, will make your, your day or your week a little bit better. Because, trust me, a little bit of Disney love goes a very long way. So, well, this is the Disney Life Happy Life podcast, the podcast where I talk about all things Disney. Not just Disney travel, not just Disney parks, not just Disney movies, all things Disney. If it's Disney related, then you know I'm going to talk about it. And of course, I just said Disney movies, and the first thing that pops into my head is Encanto, because it's the, the latest Disney movie. And not only is it that, but the song, my favorite song, and it seems like a lot of other people's favorite songs, um, We Don't Talk About Bruno, is like the number one, the number one song from an animated movie since Frozen. Um, I think it, I don't know if it beat out Frozen, but it's like the biggest song um, from an animated movie since Let It Go. So that says something. And of course, I just said Disney movies, and that was the first thing that pop in, popped into my head was Encanto and We Don't Talk About Bruno. So, so yeah, there we go. So we're not talking about just one Disney thing on this podcast today. So there you go. So this is the Disney Life Happy Wife podcast. And who am I? I'm Kristen, your host, on this magical journey through my love of all things Disney. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my podcast or watch me on YouTube if you're watching. Hi, I can see you. Well, I can't see you really, but you can see me. So yay, there you go. You can see me. You're just not listening to me like you have been in the past. My brand new YouTube channel. So I hope you're enjoying that. Let me know what you think. Okay, so like I've said before with the YouTube, um, the first few few weeks, maybe first couple of months, uh, I'm going to be testing out where I'm putting my camera as I record. Um, so this is, I think, the third week, so this is the third different angle. I know it's been on either side, and now it's it's kind of head on. So, so yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying that, and let me know what you think. So, I'm going to start off uh, today's episode with uh, talking about some of my favorite Disney stores or YouTubes or Instagram accounts or Disney businesses. Um, people that are putting their love of Disney out there, just like I am putting my love of Disney out there through this podcast, through my Instagram, through my blog, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to send some love to the those people that are sending their love of Disney out there. Uh, first off, I want to show my love to an amazing Disney travel agency. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am a Disney travel agent. I work with a host company, Let It Go Journeys. So I want to send some love to them and send them a shout out because they are a great, great agency to work with. Um, for those who don't know, being a travel agent, you can either you know create your own company, you can be your own travel agent, or you can work with a host company and work with them. And that's what I do. I work with Let It Go Journeys, and I'm a Disney travel agent with them, and they are just amazing. They're a great, great company to work with. If you've ever thought about being a Disney travel agent, definitely check them out. Um, they've made becoming a Disney travel agent really easy for me. Um, and I know that they've done that for other people as well. So if you're thinking about it, check them out. My bosses, I like to call them my bosses. I don't know if they would technically call them themselves that. I think they do, uh, or they would. Uh, Alan and Amber are wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. And I just can't say enough good things about them. Whenever I have a question, whenever I need something explained to me, they're always there to do that. They're always there to explain things and answer any questions. No question is too small or too insignificant. So it's it's great to have a boss that's like that. So I'm I'm very lucky to have them with uh, the host agency that I am working with. And I don't know if you guys just heard that sound. <laughs> There's a piece of paper on the floor. Um, so yeah, 
sending some love out to uh, Let It Go Journeys. I will put a link to their website in the show notes. But I, also, if you head over to my blog, The Disney Roadie Mom, I've got links to their um, their website on there, as well as ways to contact me to be your Disney travel agent. So head on over to my website, The Disney Roadie Mom, DisneyRoadieMom.com, or head over um, to their website. The link will be in the show notes and check them out. So next, um, jumping from travel agency to one of my favorites, um, Disney travel, uh, not Disney travel. I'm sorry, we just talked about Disney travel, Disney clothing. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge fan of all Disney apparel. I, I think that that's awesome that people are, are making a living with that. So I want to definitely throw some love to another company. I know I've talked about 1953 Designs. I've talked about the Lost Bros. So today I'm going to talk about a different company. I'm not wearing one of their shirts. Um, the past couple of weeks I've been wearing the shirt and showing you on me. This time I'm going to hold the shirt up for you guys to see. Um, for those of you who are just listening to the podcast, uh, you won't be able to see them. So definitely head over to the YouTube and check it out. Uh, I will try and get some pictures of these awesome shirts and put them on my Instagram, the podcast Instagram, and show you guys what they look like. Uh, but head over to the YouTube if you really want to see them as, I, as I'm talking about them. Um, so this company is Hi Ho Design Co. They are awesome. Great shirts. Their shirts are not like um, 1953 and the Lost Bros that have the design on the front. They have the design on the back. So they have a pocket on the front with their logo on it and the design on the back. I love them. I think they're absolutely great. If you saw any pictures of me from my trip in October, you saw that I was wearing uh, one of their shirts on my first day there. So let me let me grab these. So the first one that I am showing you guys, and I'm going to try and explain explain it and describe it as best I can um, for everybody who's just listening on the podcast and not um, not watching on um, YouTube. So the first one that I am going to be talking about is this awesome shirt uh, for those who can see it. It is their um, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow and tomorrow is just a dream away shirt. It is a, I want to call it a yellowish orange. I don't know. They'll have to let me know what color this shirt is. I have a couple of, couple of their shirts in this color. I like it. Um, and it's got lettering and everything on the back in red, white, and blue. If you're a fan of Carousel of Progress, I definitely recommend getting this shirt. I am a huge fan of Carousel of Progress, so definitely got that shirt. So the next one, and this is the one that you would have seen me wear on my last trip, um, is their Gracie Manor Tours shirt. How cute is that? Um, it is a purple shirt, and it has the Haunted Mansion on it with some of our favorite inhabitants of, of Gracie Manor. It says Gracie Manor Tours, or Gracie Manor Ghost Tours. Um, make final arrangements now. One nine 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 Happy Haunts. We're dying to have you. So cute. I love that. And if you know me, I love Haunted Mansion. I love all things Haunted Mansion. So I love this shirt. So I had to wear it. Um, and the third one that I'm going to show you, I have more, but I'm only going to do three, is it's again that yellowish orange color, um, yellowish orange brownish color, I guess we'll call it. Um, tan? I don't know that I'd call it tan. Okay. But anyway, it is Oliver and Company. It says Oliver's Taxi Co. I I love this shirt. I saw them post this shirt and I was like, I need to have that shirt. I need, need, need to have that shirt. So I got it. It's Oliver's Taxi Co. Absolutely, positively the best since 1988. So I had to get the shirt because Oliver and Company is the first Disney movie I remember seeing in theaters. Um, it could have, there could have been another one that we saw first, um, but this is the first one that I remember. So when I saw that shirt, I had to get it. Nobody does Oliver and Company stuff, so I had to get that shirt. So those are the three shirts that I wanted to show you guys from Hi Ho Design Co. I will put a link uh, to their Instagram, their site, um, 
on the show notes so you guys can go check out the shirts as well and check out their stuff. They are awesome. So definitely, definitely, definitely check them out. So now let's get on to this week's episode. So now that we've we've shown some some other people some love, let's talk about let's talk about Disney. So if you're looking at YouTube, you can see that I'm I'm decked out in Disney besides no Disney shirt this week. Uh, I've got my my Minnie Mouse uh, necklace that I got and my Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas ears that I got during a trip. I absolutely love them because I besides Haunted Mansion, I love Nightmare Before Christmas as well. So. So on to this week's episode. So it is Disney Life Happy Wife Wednesday. That's what I like to call Wednesdays on when our podcast comes out. Um, so this podcast comes out on Wednesdays. The YouTube episode comes out on Fridays, though. But the first day that this comes out is, is Wednesday. So it's been a busy week already. It's only Wednesday, and it's been a busy week here. So on Monday, we celebrated um, Martin Luther King Day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, MLK Day. But however you you want to phrase it, we were celebrating a wonderful man who just has the most amazing legacy and what what he did for this country, I just words can't describe it. So Emily had no school; she was home. They had talked about um, Martin Luther King in school. She had done a bunch of things the week before about uh, I Have a Dream. They talked about what his dream was, and they each got to talk about their own dreams, which was great. Um, so it was it was great that she got to be home, and um, we got to talk, to talk about Martin Luther King. And she and I, when we homeschooled last year, we, we talked about Martin Luther King, and we watched his speech, and we talked about the amazing things that he did. And... So it's great that the kids get to have that day off from school for Emily's school. I, I hope everybody across the country gets to have that day off, but you never know. So she had Monday off, and then yesterday was Tuesday, and she had the day off from school. Well, she had a distance learning day. She had the day off from in-person. Um, she had a distance learning day, so she got to wake up late, and we did schoolwork for a majority of the, the late morning and early afternoon. And then she got to play and have fun, and there you go. So when we were doing schoolwork, it was definitely kind of flashback for me when we were doing homeschool. So it was it was interesting, to say the least. So I think I think it reminded her of what it was like to do homeschool with me. So I'm I'm not sure if she was like, oh, I like I like being in school with my teacher way better than this, but we'll see. So at the end of last week. Uh, my husband and I had some major discussions about our upcoming Disney trip. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, I had a, I had, there we go. So we had a Disney trip scheduled in less than two weeks. We were leaving on January 30th and we were coming back eight days later. And we had Oh, at the end of last week, had some major discussions about it because we needed to finalize things and get all that stuff done. And things had to be changed around a bit because I'm a uh, an annual pass holder and, and all of that. And we needed to kind of rework the way that we had originally booked it. Um, and we had to get it done. And we just had some major discussions about it, which brings me to today's episode. Um changes to our Disney life and our Disney reality. So, yeah. So, we were supposed to be heading to Walt Disney World, and my husband and I um, made the decision that we were going to cancel our trip. So, I know it's, it's kind of sad, but, you know, we thought it was for the best. Um... So we were supposed to be going to Walt Disney World for eight days. That's our usual. Seven, eight days is our usual trip. Um, and we were going to be staying at the Wilderness Lodge, which is on our resort bucket list. I My resort bucket list is pretty much every resort. I want to stay at every resort at least once so I know what they're like. Um, as a travel agent, it's good for me to know so I can describe them and I can recommend them. But, you know, as a Disney fan, I just it's good for me to, to know that too. I don't know if it's good for me, but I, I like to know that. So... We 
had dining reservations done, we had park reservations done, and we were all set to go, and then something changed. There wasn't the same excitement about the trip. There wasn't the same excitement about going. We weren't talking about it so much. We weren't super excited. Um, and it, there just seemed to be obstacles standing in our way of going. So with that in mind, you know, it was, we just talked about it and we hadn't been to Disney as a family since February of 2020 and you know things have changed since then so we we talked about it and um yeah we decided that we were going to cancel our trip which is sad um but things were just different and my husband and I didn't really know how that would affect the way that things usually are for for our family when we're in Disney um it's just a lot to to take in and to really see what it's going to be like. And it's hard, but we usually, one of our big things, because Emily is only seven years old, is we do a lot of character dining. Uh, we do character dining because waiting in line to meet characters can be a bit long, especially for a now seven-year-old. Um, in the past, you know, she was five or younger. So that was a lot. So we did a lot of character dining so she could meet characters. Well, character dining is few and far between. You know, there are some I stayed... You're going to hear me talk a lot about how I was there in October. <laughs> because it's, you know, the first time I had been since the pandemic. And it's the experience that I've had since. Um, so when I was down in October, I went to um, the Crystal Palace. And I had lunch there one day. It was delicious, as always. The buffets had just come back, so it, that was great. But there was no Winnie the Pooh. No Pooh, no Piglet, no Eeyore, no Tigger. And that was sad, because we always went there so Emily could see those four characters. She loves those characters. And, um, yeah, it was just kind of sad that they weren't there. I was also lucky enough to get a breakfast reservation at Cinderella's Royal Table which was delicious. The food was amazing as always. We've never had breakfast there. So I was excited to have breakfast there. But again, there was, I saw Cinderella once and she came out and she was out for, you know, all of a minute. She walked around, she waved, she did not stop. She stopped at a couple of places where she was socially distanced and she waved at the kids and everything. Um, and I know she was at a point where I was sitting where if I had Emily stand up from her seat, I probably could have gotten a picture with Cinderella in the back. Um, but it just, it was not the same as the experience that we've had in the past. So, yeah. Character dining isn't exactly the same as it was. So how, how would that be? You know, how would that be for Emily, character dining wise? She can't go up and hug the princesses or the other characters. She can't high five them. You know, she has to stay socially distanced. And I know it would be hard, but I, I don't know how that would be for her. When I was there in October, I was able to get a couple of so socially distanced selfies with a couple characters, Winnie the Pooh and Mickey, uh, over in Epcot, and that was great. It was great to see them, you know, to, to feel that Disney magic there. You know, the fact that Cinderella was there, um, that that made me really happy that she was there at Cinderella's Royal Table. So that, that magic was, was there, but I'm not sure how that would be for a seven-year-old. So I don't want her to be disappointed that she can't go up and hug them. I mean, she will be, but at the same time, I don't want that to ruin a trip for her because she can't see them and she can't get close enough to them. Um, I know that she would adjust quickly. She would adjust to the limits and she would adjust to the way that the new rules are, but I just don't know. I just don't know if that would make her excitement for Disney less because she can't, you know, be as close as she used to be. So I, I just don't know. Since our last trip, another big thing that has changed is that there are no dining plans. And I understand why they don't have them. They don't have them simply because not all of the restaurants are open. And I'm not sure if that's because they're, they're not 
making their level, their volume capacity back to 100 yet. I'm not sure if it's because of staffing, because I'm sure they're short staffed still. Um, things just aren't back to 100% yet. So I don't know if the dining is because of that. So we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully within the next year, everything will be opened again and the dining plans will be back. You know, fingers crossed. But we'll see. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, that, that it's all back. Um, but that, you know, the dining plans not being there also does put a big damper on things, especially for families who counted on that dining plan. Having the dining plan, especially the deluxe dining plan, which was the most expensive, but it also makes Disney feel more all-inclusive. You know, you've got your resort, you've got your, ho you've got your tickets, and you've got all of your dining paid for. I mean, how perfect is that? Except for, except for gratuity. Um, we loved it. We did the dining plan every time. And we did the deluxe dining plan as often as we could. And it was wonderful to have all of our meals paid for. You could have whatever you wanted and it was all set. As long as, you know, you planned out your points and everything, it was all set. So for it to not be there, especially when it was one of the things that you looked forward to, it was, it's a little, it's a little hard to adjust to that. And when I went in October, it was fine for me because I, I only did one dining reservation a day to see what it was like. And now I know that if I were to go by myself, well, when I go by myself again, I will not <laughs> make dining reservations. Um, but it's, it's hard to go from having everything included to then going, okay, I need to budget or I need to put that into my budget of how much I'm going to bring with me to pay for all of my meals. So it, it can get a, a little bit tricky. Being by myself, I didn't necessarily have to. I knew how much money I had brought with me. So I was just planning, you know, for every meal by myself. So it wasn't so hard for me. I don't think it's that. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal, especially, you know, what if they never come back? I think that they will because it was a big money maker for Disney. But um, if they don't come back for a while, I think people will just get used to it. But we'll see. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was a big thing that left. Another big thing that left is Fast Passes. And that was another thing that Disney had that we didn't need. We lost the Magical Express, that's gone. Fast passes are gone, and fast passes were a great thing. You could make three fast passes a day if you were staying at Disney, and you could make them 60 days in advance, and they were free. Well, Disney has since changed to this new system called the, Di the Genie system, or Genie Plus, and if you pay for Genie Plus, you get to use the Lightning Lane. Um, I'm not exactly sure, I have to check all, all of my info, but you can make you can make your plans. You can only do it that day. So if I'm if I'm there on a Monday, I have to get up at 7 a.m. I have to make my uh, Genie Plus Lightning Lane uh, reservations, I guess we'll say, or choose which ones I want to do, and then go from there. Whether you get what you want or not is is a whole different story because there's a whole bunch of other people that are making their picks for that day as well. And some of the rides aren't even included with the, G the Genie Plus um, price. You then have to pay additional for some of the more popular rides. So, having never used Genie Plus, I don't know how worth it it is. I've heard so many mixed reviews of Genie Plus, I can't even tell you. So many people say that it's a waste of time and a waste of money. So many people say, it's great, definitely use it. Is it really worth it? If it was just like FastPass, I would say, heck yes. Heck yes, let's use it. But it's not. It's not the same as, as fast passes. You're not making them two months in advance. You're making them the day of. And it's hard because, you know, we used to use that and we would plan our day. You know, we'd have our dining reservations We'd plan out where we're going to be that day, where we're gonna, what part of the parks we're going to be in for which thing. Um, if we were park hopping, where we would go. We would plan all of that. But with the new Genie Plus, you can't really do that. You're just kind of at the whim of when you can get a lightning lane. So, And because it came out after I was there in October, I have no idea what it's really like. 
So I can't really tell, you know, my husband and my daughter what's going to happen because I don't have the answers for that. And, you know, as somebody who loves to have all the answers, that that's a little hard for me. So we'll see. Hopefully I can get some friends who have been down there and find out. My husband had a friend who just went down and did use the Genie Plus and they said that it was great. So we'll see. And of course there's the big there's the big issue of the time that has brought all of these changes, COVID. My husband had another friend who just went down to Disney recently and everybody in his party I'm not sure how many it was, but everybody in his party, except one, got sick. Everybody. I don't know how, I don't know how bad it was, you know, they're vaccinated and, and all of that. So I don't know how badly they got COVID, but everybody except one person got COVID in their whole party when they were down at Disney. So, I mean, that's just the, the time that we live in. Emily and I got COVID right before Christmas. She got it because she was at school and she passed it to me. So, I guess that's just the way that it is. But, with all of the, the quarantining and everything like that, it makes life a little bit harder coming home from Disney and having COVID and, and all that. So. so, we won't even get too much into that. It's just another factor to kind of watch into making a Disney trip these days. You kind of have to see what's, what's going on with all of that. So, there we go. But... With all of this in mind, all the different changes that's gone on, how I feel about certain things, how my husband feels about certain things, how we think certain things will affect Emily on a trip, how it will change her perception of the magic that is Walt Disney World. Um, we decided it was for the best that we cancel our trip. We are planning to go as a family to Disney in November of this year. Um, this, this trip that we were going on in January, February was kind of a last minute thing. We were originally going for five days, I think it was. It was supposed to be a short trip for us, um, four or five days, and then we decided to extend it to eight days, um, two of them being travel days, having a day in between, and then with everything, we just decided to cancel it, and we're going to do some things around here. Uh, there's a Great Wolf Lodge near us. And by near us, I mean like an hour away. So we're going to go to Great Wolf Lodge for a few days. And um, at the beginning of the week and then at the end of the week, we're going uh, snow tubing up at a, a place near us as well. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I live in Rhode Island. And there's snow. <laughs> so going tubing in the snow is, is a big thing. Em loves sledding and tubing and stuff like that. So we're going to do that instead. Not the same as going to Disney, but we're still going to have a lot of fun. So, so even though we're not going to Disney in January, February, we are, I, we, I am going to Disney in April. So it should be either my second solo trip or it'll be my very first mother-daughter trip. We posed the idea to Emily that she could come with me for four days in April. Uh, I'm going the week after April vacation and we proposed the idea to her that she could come with us or come with come with us come with me and have a mother daughter trip and instantly she said no she didn't want to go if my husband wasn't going she, she says i don't want to go if daddy's not going I said, okay she doesn't want to go if it's not going to be a big family trip so we'll see if she changes her mind and it ends up being a mother daughter trip if not i will be heading on my second solo trip in april four days and I scored a great resort, the Grand Floridian. I'm so excited about it. I think I stayed there once when I was a kid. I'll have to check. Uh, I know I stayed at the Polynesian when I was a kid, but I'll have to check on the other one. Uh, so I'm very excited about staying at the Grand Floridian. It's, it's not on my husband's bucket list of places to stay. It's definitely on mine. Like I said, I want to stay at all the resorts. So... We'll see. I'll have to let you guys know whether it's going to be a solo or it's going to be a mother-daughter trip. So that's that's where we are, folks. Wanted to keep you guys updated on what my current Disney situation is. Whether, you know, the good, the bad. We had all this planning and had to cancel it. It's sad. I know. But I'll be there in April, so that's exciting for me. 
hopefully Emily will be with me. Uh, she knows it'll be a more of a boring trip for her because I don't do roller coasters and that kind of stuff like my husband does. But we'll see. We'll see what we can do. So that's it for, for today's episode, folks. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you enjoyed listening to my, my Disney reality. So if you have any thoughts on what I talked about on Genie Plus, if you've gone and you've done the Genie Plus, definitely send me a message and let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you think about dining plans, whether you think they're going to come back, whether you liked them, whether you didn't, and your thoughts on, on today's episode. Definitely let me know. So where can you send me a message or, or contact me? You can either go to my blog, the Disney Roadie Mom. So it's Disney Roadie. It's R-H-O-D-Y mom.com. You can go through there, through the contact me page and send me a message. You can shoot me an email, dlhwpodcast at gmail.com. You can DM me on any social media, on Facebook and Instagram. It is at Disney Life Happy Wife Podcast. All five words, all together. D sorry. Disney Life Happy Wife Podcast. Or on uh, on Twitter, it's at DLHW Podcast. Email is DLHW Podcast at gmail.com. So it's the same, the Twitter and the email. So you can message me, you can DM me, you can email me through any of those. Okay? Blog, social media, email, send me a message and let me know what you think. I would love to know. And besides social media, where can you listen to the Disney Life Happy Wife podcast besides where you're listening right now? And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you just saw my cat Molly jump up on, on my bed. And, and you might be able to hear her talking to my other cat <laughs> right now. So, so yeah, be nice, Molly. I have to tell her to be nice. So, where can you listen to the podcast? Well, you can listen to the podcast anywhere podcasts are put out. Um, if there's a place where I am not, I am not seen, then let me know and I will get registered through there. Apple, I'm on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, everywhere. But if you find a place where I'm not, let me know and I will get on there as quick as I can. And I'm also on YouTube. For those of you who are watching, you already know. If you don't know, I am on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. I will put a link in the show notes so that way you guys can check it out. I highly recommend it. Anywhere where you can listen or follow or anything, like this episode, follow, review, subscribe, give me a comment, hit the bell on YouTube so you can get reminders for when my, my episodes come out and, and all that great stuff. So do it all. Do it all. Like, subscribe, follow, all of it. Okay? So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to listen to my podcast and watch if you're on YouTube. So thank you so much for all of that. It means the world to me to be able to bring my love of Disney to you guys. And I would love to hear what you guys think. So do all of that. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have no idea how much it means to me for you guys to be on this journey with me. So thank you again and have a magical rest of your week, everybody. And I will see you real soon. Now I and a ghost will follow you home. <laughs> Hurry back. Hurry back.